What's going on creatives? I'm Dustin Valkama and in today's video we're going over my process on removing a subject from a background in Photoshop. If you guys haven't seen my introduction to hair masking and how to do that the easy way using channels, make sure to check that out. I really hope you guys like this video today. Let's get started. All right guys, so here we are in Photoshop and similar to the last video, I'll just make the point that in order to get a good selection with the methods that I'm using here, you need to make sure that you have good separation to begin with. And that's primarily coming in this photo from the key light to the left side here and then the rim light on the right and they really kind of help um, pull the subject from the background. And so in this selection process, it just makes it easier because the ways that we're going about this work a little bit quicker. So what I'll do to remove the subject here is I'll just duplicate, which is Control or Command J, and I'll move into the Magic Wand tool. Now in the Magic Wand tool, you'll see that up here in the center of the screen, in the toolbar, you'll see that it says Select Subject. Now that's the first thing that I'll typically press. And what that will do is it will calculate the image and put a selection around what it thinks is your subject in the photo, which in this case works quite well because we already had that separation to begin with. You can see that there are areas that are missed here. And what we'll do is with this magic wand tool, we'll just go through and either add or subtract parts of this selection. Um, and then we'll just press Alt or Option and that's just going to remove parts of the selection there. And so we'll just continue our way around the model and see if there's areas like that that we can actually pick off pretty easily. You want to be detailed, but not too detailed because we will go into a quick masking and do a little bit of additional painting to kind of clean up some of these edges. Make sure that we get these buttons here. That'll help. Actually, we can paint those in too later on. All right, so with this selection here, what I typically do is I press Control Shift or Command Shift I, which will invert the selection, and then I'll press Q. Now Q will bring up your quick mask, and this is similar to a layer mask if you understand that black is typically what you'll want to remove from the photo and anything that's clear or doesn't have any coloring to it is what would remain. And so the reason that I actually went through and inverted that selection is to create this red mask around my subject because it just helps me personally see a little bit better what's going on. Inside of the quick selection, we'll grab our brush tool and scale that down. We'll make sure that our opacity is at 100 and we'll turn off our pen pressure sensitivity. And in this case, we'll actually want to paint black on the subject, which will create this red overlay. And so we'll just continue around these edges anywhere that we see that might actually need a little bit more of a touch up. So you can see in these areas here that wand selection didn't do a very great job. And so we'll just continue our way around here. And the reason that I actually like to use this method versus the pen tool is primarily because when I'm in the pen tool, I, I tend to get very uh, particular about the way that my Bezier curves are oriented. And I found myself taking a whole lot of time in just making masks. And that was something that in a production world isn't really going to fly too well if you don't need it. And so I found that if I just have this kind of separation to start with in my photo, as I'm going through this process, it makes it a lot easier just to be able to pull a quick mask this way because the end result is really darn near close to the same anyways. So as we're making our way around the model here, you'll see that I'm toggling my foreground and background colors of white and black and I'm just pressing X to do that. What that's doing is just switching between the, the white and black colors um, that I'm using to paint. So anything that's black is going to be red, anything that's white is going to be eventually cut out after I invert this selection again here before we move on. So I'm just taking care of any of these areas that I see that 
the select subject didn't pick up greatly. And some of these you can get away with. Areas like this that are on the edge of the subject this way typically need to be pulled out just to make sure that we can get a good selection because these would actually be noticed pretty easily. I'm really one of those kind of artists that I believe in the if it looks right, it is right method. And I don't like to put too much thought into things if I don't need to. So I can kind of save that brain space for uh, the rest of the compositing that we'll be doing. So I'm just about done here actually cleaning that up. And that actually looks pretty good. So what I'll do is I'll press Q and you'll see that our entire background is selected. So I'll press uh, Controller Command Shift and I to invert that selection. And then from here, we're actually gonna move into the selected mask, which is going to allow us to add a little bit of a feather or anything that we need to on the outside of our model. So now moving into select and mask, I typically like to have this view here on black and my opacity at 100%. If you lessen that opacity, it'll show your background um, behind your subject and we really don't want that because we wanna see what our mask will look like. And the reason why I actually like to have it this way is so that I can see areas on the model that might have extra fringing, um, kind of like this area here, you can see the backdrop bleeding through just a little bit. And that really helps me out and know exactly what's going on in this in this scene here. Typically like to keep things at their default values. Um, the one thing that I would say to be wary of is having this smooth filter up too high. Sometimes it can be really good. We'll see if we can find an area here that isn't going to benefit from that too well. This is actually a very decent um, cutout that we're doing. So sometimes you get like little crunchy areas along the edges. I try to keep that at a lower value so that we're not overly smoothing things. If I bring up this value here, you'll see that along the edges, it starts to get really weird and it can create some really weird masking issues here. Like you can see in this area here with the buttons where that smooth is just taking effect and just weird parts of the mask. And so I try to keep that generally between three and four, sometimes five if I really need it. And the feather, what I what the feather does is it creates just the nice soft edge here. In reality, you would have bits of depth of field or grain or anything like that along the edges there that would kind of create a smoother transition than just having a very harsh edge similar to what we have here now. And so I'll typically pull that feather amount up just a little bit. And what this contrast slider does is it actually acts as like a threshold. So if we bring it up, it crunches those values. We can bring contrast to zero and you can see how that feather really took effect and it's almost overpowering for what we might want in this situation. And so I'll bring that contrast up a little bit and it just cr it just crunches that transition a little bit there to make it a little bit more of a crispy line versus overly feathered. The shift edge slider is actually really nice because what that does is it will either expand or contract your mask. And if we set that value closer to zero here, you can see that there is a little bit of fringing that would happen. And if we just shift those pixels, what that does is it kind of chokes or expands that mat. And so we'll just pull that in. I typically pull it in anywhere between, you know, 10 and 15, hoping that I have a, a nice enough mass to start with. And little areas like this here that's happening between these two pieces of fabric, I typically don't worry about. That's something that would easily be hidden in grading. And so I, I don't worry about that too much. You can waste way too much time in here. It can be like a black hole sometimes. I really don't use decontaminate colors too often. With my output, I always choose new layer with layer mask and it's pretty self-explanatory. It just creates a new layer with a layer mask. And then I always choose remember settings because once I have these set, I always look to have a very similar or same type of mask in any of my composites. And so that's a pretty good base to start with most of the time. So I'll just click OK. Now that that's done processing, you can see that it created a new layer and a layer mask. And so what I'll typically do at this point 
is I will just select the layer below that and then I'll create a new solid adjustment layer and set that to about a 30% black. And what that will do is it'll give us just a nice base to see how that mask is looking overall. And we're really not concerned with the hair because we'll handle that here in a moment. But we can see that this is a pretty nice selection and it could be used in just about any composite already. Now, as I said before, this is something that I typically like to go this route unless it's very high level production. Uh, most clients wouldn't even notice if you have a client that's zooming in all the way and noticing these tiny little pieces of black here, then you can just take a little bit more time and refine your process. But for any other applications, this would be just about perfect. Now we want to handle the hair and that's something like in the last video I stated that I just cut the head off of my model and I will treat the hair as a completely separate entity. And so we'll grab our lasso tool, which is the L as a hotkey, and we'll just use our lasso tool. Actually, make sure that your feather is at zero because we don't want to have a feathered mask here. So we'll go ahead and select the head, control or command J to duplicate that head layer. And then we just hop right back into the same process as we did before, where we head to channels. And we know that being in the same scenario as the last video, that using this red channel here is going to give us the best bang for our buck as far as separation goes to start with. And so I'll just right click that and say duplicate channel. We'll name that hair alpha. Click OK, and that's going to create our new alpha channel down here at the bottom that we can work from. Well, at this point, what I'll do is I'll actually create another selection and invert that, Control or Command Shift I, and then with black as the background um, color, I'll just press Control Delete, and that'll just fill that entire area with black. And now to move forward with actually masking the hair, the first thing that I'll typically do to see if this works is I'll use the curves or the levels tool to see if I can crunch any of these values down any better than what they currently are without having to paint too much and dodge and burn. In this case, we'll use the curves. And so we'll press Control or Command M to bring up our curves panel here. And on this lower side, this affects all of the shadows down here. And then this higher side controls all of the highlights. So you can see that in just creating this simple S curve, we're already getting a fairly close to black background. And so we'll just start to drag this over this lower point here over to the right until we see that gray backdrop go to black. And then we can do the same thing on the other side here and bring those highlights up as far as we can without destroying any of the, any of the extra detail that's there. So once you get to a good spot with that, you can just press OK. At this point, I'll just work my way around and kind of see the areas that may need extra dodge and burn. And you can see areas like this here that may need to be boosted up a little bit. And it's really anything that's right along the outer edges of our head. And so I'll press the O key to bring up my dodge tool or shift O if you're currently on another tool and need to get the dodge. It's the little magnifying glass looking um, tool there. And I'll set my range to highlights exposure. We'll go to about a 30, 30, 40 percent exposure. Anything's really going to work. It's just a matter of how quickly you want that effect to build up. And so we'll just grab this dodge brush and we'll start dodging right around any of these areas that we really need to be fairly close to opaque. I'll actually bump my exposure up just a little bit to work some somewhat faster here. It's okay to work with this a little bit 
dirty, I wouldn't say that the process always has to be perfect. A lot of times there's quite a bit of other distraction that'll be going on in your scene as far as um, the composite goes that you don't always need to have this as a, a perfect scenario and sometimes you can actually just paint some of this hair back in if you need to. Just using the hair brushes kind of like we talked about in the last video. So it doesn't need to really be perfect. You just want to have it close to make sure that you get a, a nice mask to start from. So I'd say that this looks pretty good to start. And if we need to refine this even more, we can come back to it later. But what I'll do here is I'll grab the brush tool, opacity to 100, and I'll take off any pen pressure sensitivity that I currently have. And I'll use a semi-hard brush. It doesn't need to be full hardness. And I'll just work my way right around these edges. And I'll paint all of that hair white. And then areas like this that you can't really see onto the shoulder, I'll typically just paint that white. And if I need to, I can refine that later on. We'll see if that makes a difference here in this photo. I haven't really worked on this photo prior to doing the tutorial, so I figured it'd be nice to give you guys a little bit more of a raw output. Just in case something goes wrong, we can explain it as we go. But we'll go through and we'll paint all of the hair out. So in this area down here, where the hair and the shoulder meet, what I like to do is just come in and just take the time to paint that rough edge there, just in case we need that bit of the selection later on when we go to put the hair back onto our model. And I'm not sure if that'll actually cause a problem or not, but if we need it, it's there. So we have the mask put together pretty well now, and so we just need to fill the rest of this in. And what I'll do is I'll just grab my lasso tool and I'll create a mask on the inside here. Something that's just fairly loose. And I'll make sure that my background color is white and press Control Delete or Command Delete. And that'll just fill everything in. You just fill in little areas if you miss them. But that's our hair mask. And so at this point, what I'll do is I will just control or command click this icon or the thumbnail there for the hair alpha to create that selection. And then with this head layer selected, I'll just create a new layer mask with that. Now, if we remove everything else, we can see that we have our hair selection. And as I said in the last video, guys, like these areas here that have a very like awkwardly weird, you can see gray through it type of scenario. I don't focus on that too much because oftentimes that will get hidden in anything else that we do. And so it doesn't really bother me to have that little bit hanging out there. So what we'll do at this point is we'll bring back our body mask and then we can bring back our neutral gray solid color layer there. And then on the body mask layer, I'll just name these a minute, body mask and hair. So on this body layer, we'll just grab a black brush with our opacity at 100 and pen pressure sensitivity off. And we'll just paint right around the outsides of the hair. So what that's going to do is just allow us to bring back the mask that we just created along the entire outside of the model. So the shoulder area here actually didn't create a problem like I thought it might. But we can see here on this other side that we have these two little areas of backdrop now and that's actually from the hair layer where I had overpainted just a little bit. 
And so I'll select that layer and then paint this area out of that. And then we just clean up on these two masks. Little areas, this is from the body layer. And so we'll grab that. And yeah guys, that's it for the selection portion here. And so we have all of these masks set now. Missed a little bit on the edge there. But now you can see that the hair and the body are both selected. And what we can do is just grab a background. Let's see here. Just grab this rough image to see if we can throw that in. And I'll throw that underneath everything. And this way we can just check out our mask and see how that looks overall, which I don't think there would be any problem with this here. Even with the fringing, I think that that looks pretty good. What I typically do at this point, just to make sure that I have a, a pretty smooth process in place, is grab both my hair and body layer, and I will just create a smart object out of those. So I'll right click. Convert to Smart Object. And what that does is that just allows me to have everything in a single file. So if I actually need to go back to that in the future and make any adjustments to any of these masks while I'm compositing, I can just double click this adjustment layer in the thumbnail. And that'll bring me right into the file where both of my masks are and I can work on this independently. And then after saving this, it will update in my main comp and then take on any other adjustments that I've done to that smart object afterwards. That's it guys, that's my process on removing my subjects from a background in Photoshop. I hope you guys liked this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you wanna see more. Click the bell icon so that you get notified first when I upload new content. If you guys have any questions, make sure to drop that in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it there or we can follow up with another video later on just kind of going over more in depth processes or things that you guys might need answers to. Thank you guys so much for being here. We'll see you next time.